Tuesday, June 30th, 2020. I'm sorry for the tardy start today. If you're watching the replay, you won't know that. But if you're watching live, we're four minutes late, and that's due to a meeting that ran over. So sorry for the late start, but we'll make it up in content and meaning. Um, today's weather, if you look out the window, it looks kind of nice now. It's not going to be a very stable weather pattern for the next couple days. So it'll be some showers later. We'll get into the 80s, but it's not a a great day. It's a day you probably want to get out earlier rather than later, so take advantage of it. Now, I always forget to do the menu, so we do the menu sooner rather than later, so I don't forget to have it right here. And I'm happy to say it's a nice menu for today. We're starting with uh, a little bit of soup, which is garden vegetable soup. We're going to have um, beef and pasta, and we're having cinnamon applesauce for dessert, so uh, rather sweet and enjoyable. Uh, I'm into the sweet phase, as some of you might have heard, I'm doing a lot of juicing, and Wendy's behind the scenes today. I made her a special juice today, which played to good reviews. With, uh, we'll talk about that perhaps later. In terms of dinner, minestrone soup. We have eggplant parmesan tonight, and linguine with garlic olive oil, and we have orange sorbet. So hopefully you'll enjoy your meals today. Um, I have some moments in uh, history today, which um, the Corvette was born today. For those of you car enthusiasts, and I've ever been in one, and um, perhaps you haven't been in one in a while. I was in one um, in February, because I have a friend who has a dealership, and I was down in Florida, and getting into a Corvette isn't so easy. They're kind of low to the ground. It took me a little of uh, action to get down and into it, but the birth of the um, Corvette, and also the starting date for Gone with the Wind, for those of you famous, uh, like these great movies, and probably one of the most famous movies of all time, it was born today as well in the theater. So. Exciting things for today. Um, in terms of birthdays, I don't have the birthday list with me because I left it on my desk. So if anybody off camera has them, we will celebrate those birthdays. I'm seeing a lot of faces shaking feverishly. No, we don't have the birthdays. So I wish everybody a happy birthday whose birthday it is. And we will perhaps, on Wendy Wednesday, could you cover Tuesday birthdays? Sure. In addition to? You got it. Because I don't want to be um, not giving people their proper ado on their birthday. Tuesday, June 30th is a great day. It means you're a cancer in the horoscope, which I am as well. So if you check your horoscope today, we'll be sharing it. Um, but it's time now for me to welcome on my special guest and very close working partner, close working partner, Deb Messina. How are you? Good, how are you? Thank you for joining us today. And as all guests who appear on my show, you will be entitled to a free pizza. <laughs> I know it's shocking too because we've probably had about 10,000 pizzas together over time. We well, have. Yeah. Including many during this pandemic. And of course, just so Debbie has her mask, she took it off to come on, and I have mine as well, just so people don't think we've forgotten uh, what's going on in other parts of the country. Um, it's creating additional uh, concerns, and um, we don't let our guard down no matter what. So to us, it's just a reminder that we're on top of things. As you know, we have a visit program, which is drive-in visits. If you're taking advantage of it and watching this on YouTube or your residents, you want to tell your families about it, please take advantage of the chance to come in and visit in a way which is uh, socially distant and safe uh, during this time. But Deb, um, let's talk about you a little bit. You've been at the home for some time now. Yeah. And um, you know, I thought it'd be interesting to talk about, you know, you, you have a background which spans a few different categories of work. Uh, human resources being one of them. And one of the things I've been most interested in, I thought you could talk a little bit about this morning, is your development of talent. You know, you are one of the most keen spotters of, of people's abilities and skills. It's a really special quality and it really helps to develop. Many of the people that are uh, touching our residents and around them have touched your hands in a way or another. And but maybe you can talk about how you like doing that and, and, and what that's been like for you. Um, that's actually been, you know, a 
a really favorite part of, of my job and I have to say that I have um, experienced that and learned from example, especially at the Hebrew home. So um, I started here um, a few years ago and I actually started here in human resources. It was a non-traditional path for me and um, I actually at one point while I was here started working for one of your programs and um, I guess, you know, a, an opportunity presented itself and you asked if I would, you know, consider doing it. And that was the director of adult daycare and um, I politely said no to you <laughs> because I didn't think that that was um, where my career was going at the time. And um, after a couple of weeks and a few conversations, um, you know, I decided to to, to try it, and it was one of the most beneficial things that has happened to me here. And it, it really gave me a good foundation to learn all of the other things. So um, learning from that example, I tried to um, take some of my skills that I've learned in, in HR and trying to see what people are not only good for now in their present job, but where it takes them in their future, what they can do, what their potential is, so. Well, that's a gift, Deb, I think, you know, and watch you in each of these areas where you take people and, you know, they might think they want to do X, and maybe this goes back to some of your HR background, but people don't always know what they want to do. They think they want to do something, and then they're doing something else, but, you know, you seem to really spot talent and develop it. Do you enjoy that? Is it, is it uh, exciting for you? Is it? I definitely do. I, I, I love to see, um, when people flourish and when people succeed at, you know, a task that, especially when they think they can't do it. And that, you know, I, I really, it's, it's really about building that trust within people because I oftentimes tell people, you know, trust me, like you can do it. People doubt themselves a lot. And again, from experience, that's really where it, it stems from. It's, is there a special ingredient to do that? Is it just something you've done instinctually over time? Is there a formula to it? Because they're really they're scattered around. You have in housing, you have mm -hmm. in the nursing home parts. They're all through our organization, and, and our watchers might not know them to be that, but we know because mm -hmm. we know who they are. And is there anything special to it? Is it just something you're gifted at? I just I I don't know. I think it's it's the ability to recognize beyond the surface, and um, really get to that that point of speaking to people and getting to know, you know, connecting the dots. And sometimes they can't do that on their own and being able to guide them through that, I, that's what I enjoy doing. I mean, you have a very good strategic head too and you're involved in some programs that are already alive here and some that people haven't seen yet and you're always sort of thinking about things. I guess maybe it's the same for people as you do for program. You seem to always be focused a step ahead. Um, I really, I think a lot of the basis of that is um, is listening. Um, and listening not only to the internal things that are going on within the home and long-term care and um, with your employees, but really looking at the external as well. Like, you know, seeing where industries are going. And, you know, we, we might look at this as, you know, we're a nursing home, this is people's home, and, and that is first and foremost. But um, Again, looking at you know the external factors that that impact us, whether that's you know government factors or um, economy factors. There's a lot that you know to see to to, to pull from. It's interesting. You wouldn't think, uh, or most people wouldn't think of listening as being a major skill set, but it really is. I mean, everybody can talk, and many of us are talking quite a bit, but not everybody listens well. I, I find that sometimes people talk and. Then they're breathing a little bit, getting ready to reload and talk some more, <laughs> but they're not listening. I mean, I, I think it's an important point. Yeah. I think it's important, point, not just in terms of what you're describing, but in life. I think it's it's kind of that way. Are there? Um, I mean, you didn't, uh, I think, set out to work in long-term care and so forth, right? Yeah. It was not. It sort of you went to school locally at a wonderful college that I, did. That I know well. Yeah. Right? Jasper. We both are college graduates. We take great pride in. Um, but you had a couple other things you did before you came here. Did, does this feel like it was meant to be when you got here? I mean, how did you, I mean, you worked in 
adult home kind of stuff, and he did a few different things. Um, yeah, and I, I do think that, you know, that pathway that I took after college really did um, help me in, in every facet. So um, some people know, but most people don't. I worked in um, insurance. Um, I did it for, you know, a couple years after college, and I did um, large commercial lines insurance. So I was on construction sites. Um, it was, it was, you know, great. I mean, it wasn't, you know, wasn't my career goal, but you probably pick up the piece. I of, picked up a lot. Yeah. You know, and, and it helped me when I moved into HR, which was for a nonprofit that had day programs and group homes for, um, you know, developmentally delayed adults and children, and um, that was you know, my HR background, and then I came here. So, no, I did not, any career or any job that I had, I really didn't set out to take, but it became, you know, a, a good stepping stone and a, and a great experience. Well, I encourage uh, residents and anybody who bumps into you to talk to you about random topics, because one of the things we always <laughs> talk about is, Debbie's one of the smartest people I've ever met about a lot of things. And there are things you wouldn't expect. So you'll say, well, I was going to buy a toaster, and you happen to know a lot about toasters. And I'm thinking about something in another country. You have a span of knowledge which crosses over a lot of things. And I encourage people to try and stump you on different things as they try and talk to you, because you have such a wide range. But you have sort of had a, a career hobby as well along the way, which we've talked an awful lot about. Yes. And maybe you could share, you know, you did some part-time work to just have a good time in another part of your life. Yeah, so I, I love baseball, and um, I always have. And I, I worked for the New York Yankees for a number of years. Now, I normally would edit that out of my show, so the New York <laughs> Yankees does not appear, but it is a fact of life. And you did, yeah. did have many different levels of jobs there, and mm -hmm. so on. Was it interesting to work within baseball? Did it, did it further your enjoyment of the game? Did it take away? Like, what, what's it like to be on the inside of working in a major league franchise? Ah, uh, it was it was great to be on the inside. Um, you know, you feel that you're more connected and more part of the game, and you know, you're considered a you know you're part of the team. You are you are a team member that that works there. So um, yeah, it was great. You know, it was it was still work though. I mean, a lot of people feel that it's like. You know, you're at a ball game. Oh, you can you watch? Can you do this? Can you do that? And you know, it, it is it is work. Met a number of famous people there, including the late owner of the Yankees, George Steinbrenner. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could share a story about what you know. He's sort of a, a larger than life figure, and maybe seemed very brash and and tough, but also had nice qualities about him too. Um, yes, very very much so. I mean, most people when you're seeing a whether it's a highlight reel or one of those documentaries about things, you know, who comes off as a militant leader and things of that nature. But there was a very soft side to him, um, a very, you know, pleasant side and, and a, just a, you know, a tough leader, but, you know, fair in that respect and, you know, loved kids, loved being around the fans. It was a really, and took care of people, right? And uh, yep. you know, there was a tragic incident in New York with a police officer being shot or something mm -hmm. like that. He he was quietly doing things behind the scene. Yes. And I was. It's funny because as as people probably know, I'm a Red Sox fan, and I always wanted him to be my owner because mm -hmm. he was the kind of owner you want who would do anything yeah. to try and win. And maybe it was frustrating at times when he got so angry, but he was angry like a fan would be angry. So you worked for the Yankees for 20 some odd years. You won a few championships while you were there, and, and they haven't won too many since. So well, you know. I don't know if it's made a good <laughs> laugh or there's some correlation to that. <laughs> okay. So that sort of work, um, your primary work here and work you did sort of for fun. What other things do you like to do to have a good time? What are what hobbies and interests would be would people be surprised to hear that you have? Um, hobbies and interests. Um, I, I have to. The general love to, you know, hang out. I love to, you know, sports. It's I love movies, love TV. 
I know you don't like being on TV. Oh, no. This is not. <laughs> and not my favorite thing. <laughs> we actually did radio once together. We did. It was kind of interesting, different, but very different today. Yes, very different today. Um, in terms of family members that might be watching tonight, I know that uh, you're very close with your family. Uh -huh. um, you have a couple sisters, maybe you could talk a little bit about that. I have two sisters, Lisa and Angela, um, and two nieces, Julia and Alyssa. And uh, my mom, Rita. We here makes a wonderful chicken parmesan. <laughs> I hear that she does. I mean, I've heard you it's talk about skill. it. So. <laughs> Do you, and you know, Debbie has another uh, sideline here occasionally. And having just celebrated my birthday and being a recipient of your baking, you are, you know, always giving me a hard time because I have shared with people that you're baking and yes. has expanded your responsibility of baking. Very much so. But your baking has touched a number of famous people. You've baked for, I think, we figured three NFL players? Yes, three NFL players. Something Very you like to do or that. something you're sort of... No, I do to. enjoy to do it. You know, I... I um, no, I, I do enjoy baking a lot. It's a skill that um, came to me from my dad, and I, I, do, I do enjoy it. Your dad had restaurants, right? He was a... Yes. And did he have specialties that he made and things that he cooked and things that you enjoyed over the years? Um, always. I mean, my, my dad was, um, uh, you know, a lot of things. He, had, uh, he was a, a butcher by trade, and we had a bakery as well. So he was a baker and a butcher. And yes, we did have restaurants, and he was a chef there. Um, my dad cooked a lot, so it was great. It that was, probably made dinner time a lot of fun because you never knew what was Yeah, coming, there was right? always, you know, it was always a dinner. It was always, you know, we all ate together always. And it was, um, it was fun. My dad would, um, but it was a, you know, always an, an episode when he cooked. Because he was a chef by trade, so it was like they didn't really care about, you know, the mess <laughs> and the cooking. And my mom used to, you know. <laughs> have a, a little bit of a, you know, cleaning up after him and moving things, you know, it was, a, it was a thing. And I know amongst the many things we shared and we both lost our dads, but they both shared the same name. Yes. So we often talk about the two Dons. Mm -hmm. So Deb, just as we close out and, and talk a little bit more about here, um, you know, things have been very difficult during this pandemic for our residents and I just wondered, you know, you came to work every day. Um, you did what you had to do. You were inspirational to the people who work for you and with you. How, how did you find it? How are you finding it? Because frankly, it's not over. We're still talking about these. We're still worrying about waves. We're trying to normalize things for everybody here. But how did you work through it? How was your process of handling it? Um, the process really was that we were all coming in here. I was as well as, you know, I'm not providing direct care on the floor, but I, I came here knowing that I had a purpose every day and that, you know, we were here to help people either come into the home or um, discharge safely back home. It was, um, it was a lot to be here for the staff and to be here to um, guide that process along was, you know, was a lot but very very necessary and, and you know I I thank everyone that actually you know came in every day and, and came in and, and to help and to you know offer things that were out of their their job scope it was you know it was everyone really came together during that time and I was proud to be a part of it. And I think a lot of us found it um, easier to be out and doing something than to sit home. Yes. And watch the news channels and so forth. You know, and while, you know, our families were home and, and worried about us, you know, you know, when we came to work, I, I think that a little bit of that worry went, went away for us personally. We were able to, um, you know, focus on something very different and it was focusing on other people. And I know a, a big piece of your responsibility during this was to help bring people back who were in hospitals and needed to be in places and to um, create floors for people to come safely and do it. So you want to talk about that? Because that was a major initiative at the home and working with New York Presbyterian and so forth. Yeah, it was, um, you know, bringing people here safely that were suffering COVID was, it was, 
you know, a really big, big feat for us. And I, you know, it was hard. I mean, these people were sometimes stuck in the hospital. Um, and, and it's harder in a hospital when families are, even when it was our own residence, for families to communicate. You know, being here, we had a, with the social work team and the rehab team, being able to have those family meetings and communicate and take the time to do the FaceTimes with them. It was a great comfort to the families that, you know, couldn't have that type of connection, albeit hard. They couldn't have that connection in the hospitals. So bringing people here was, was you know, really, really helpful in my mind to bring some of that connection back to them. When you, um, you know, some of our residents don't get a chance, obviously, to be out and about, and I just wonder if you could sort of paint the picture that you see out and about, you know, for people that don't get a chance to be out of the facility, you know, when you're shopping or driving or whatever. What, what's, what are you seeing where you live and your neighborhoods and so forth? Well, there's more traffic every day. So seeing that traffic, you know, in the beginning of this when it first started to happen and being that, you know, solo car on the, on the road driving here, it was a little bit, you know, surreal not to, you know, have your driver next to you or someone cut you off. And, but um, now that you see the traffic coming back, it's, you know, it's, it's almost comforting to see your partners Imagine on the road. I did say that. <laughs> People are celebrating traffic. And, <laughs> you know, seeing um, stores open and realizing that, you know, waiting online to get in a store or having a mask on, it's, you almost don't get annoyed anymore. It's almost like you're very much accepting of a lot of things that are either slower or, you know, coming back. I mean, going to Starbucks for me was a really huge thing when it opened. Like I was... Are Starbucks completely open now? Do you walk in? You don't. You can walk in, but it's one person at a time. Okay. And they bring you your drink outside. I think that might be interesting to people, really, to... It's so different. Yeah. I mean, to be limited in terms of walking in and what you touch. And, of course, everybody who's responsible is wearing masks and all points that we're touching. But it's, it's a different world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were, you know, some of us talking um, with Wendy recently about just... You know, the, the residents, uh, those of us who are watching, they've, they've seen a lot, they've been through a lot, they're very resilient. Mm -hmm. For our generations, you know, or generations to follow, this has been a bit of a test. It's a different thing for them to see, to develop their own resiliency and see changes in the world. Well, Deb, I really appreciate your joining us today. Thank you for having me. I hope it was not uh, anxiety producing. No. And I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank Allison for working the camera as always. Thank you for the not so close ups. I appreciate that. I like a little <laughs> distance. I like to be lit from the right side and so forth. David, for all your help technically. And I think we're close, David. The next tomorrow. two days are tomorrow. So those of us who are watching live or see the snowstorm on the screen, we don't look like snowstorms. But it's going to look crystal clear starting tomorrow. Starting tomorrow. So. I guess it's just no coincidence on Wendy Wednesday. Well, it's maybe after the show. Everything becomes life. clear on Wendy Wednesday. Uh, who's our <laughs> guest? Wendy. The Wendy Wednesday guest is? We are on location tomorrow. On location. At JR1. Featuring the new look, the new clear screen and everything? Yes, on location. Okay, very good. Exciting. And Lisa and Catherine are here to show support and run the board. I thank them for their help. And Deb, again, thank you for joining us today. I wish everybody a great day. It is. Nicer earlier in the day than later. We cover the menu of birthdays. Wendy's going to cover me on birthdays uh, tomorrow. And I wish everybody a great day. Thank you for joining us.